Well, 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 how are you doing? I hope you're doing great. It's a Friday afternoon. If you're a teacher or a school administrator or you work in a school janitor all the way up, thank you for your service this past year. I know it's been difficult, but thank you. Uh, and if you have a student in one of the public schools, especially in this county, do me a favor, contact the teachers, the principals, the, the other administrative members and janitors and everything else, and give them a pat on the back. This year has been difficult at best. So give them a pat on the back and thank them for dealing with this tough situation caused by coronavirus. And, uh, and for putting up with very, very, very strange conditions. Uh, and then pray for them because next year is going to be even worse. When you grab all of those people who have been virtual for the past 14 months, <laughs> and then they've had summer off as well, it's going to be a different experience for those students, and they're going to have to get used to it real quick, fast, and in a hurry. So pray for those faculty. That's why I have said at the end of every broadcast, pray for school officials, pray, pray for the faculty, pray for everyone there. So I've been saying that for over a year now, and I hope you understand and see that uh, it ain't going to be easy for some of them. So just pray for them. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to remind you that there... I don't know why I put A-T-T-N-L. <laughs> there will be no broadcast next Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. My wife and I are going with the ladies' Bible study group at Dwight Baptist Church. We're going to uh, the Creation Museum and the Ark Experience. So I won't be able to do a live broadcast. <clears throat> so do me a favor. Pray for us while we're traveling, while we're there. Pray that we learn something awesome about God we can, we can glorify Him about. And uh, also pray that we just have a good time with each other. Just want to let you know we're not going to be able to be live Monday or Tuesday. And Wednesday we'll be at church at Dwight Baptist Church. So you can join us there. Wednesday nights at 6 p.m., Sunday mornings at 10.45 a.m. Uh, for live Bible study and prayer meeting on Wednesday nights and live worship and preaching on Sunday mornings. Hey, uh, <clears throat> just let me remind you, if you'd like to help support this broadcast uh, to help pay for some of the resources I use to get this broadcast going, please consider contributing. Just go to buymeacoffee.com slash brother P. The moment we hit $100 in giving, including the $80 we raised for Miss Tammy, I'm going to send everybody my very first 30-day devotion. It's a daily devotion for 30 days, and I'm going to send it to everyone who has put their email address in at buymeacoffee.com, and I'm going to give that to you free. Uh, so, and you can share it. It's an electronic PDF document. You can share it with as many people as you want. Ideally, I would like for you to ask them to just contribute a love donation to buymeacoffee.com slash brother P., uh, and then I will just send it to them. After we get to $100, somebody contributes, they're getting a copy of it. Uh, whatever the devotional guide is for that month. Cheryl Holtoff is with us from Southside, Alabama. She says, Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, Miss Cheryl. I hope things are going well for you. And um, I hope your health is doing well and you fully recovered from that surgery. If not now, soon. 
So we're praying for that for you. Teresa, my beautiful bride, says hello, Philip and friends, and re reminds us to fully rely on God. F-R-O-G. That's what the little froggy face is there for. And then she gives us the American Sign Language symbol for I love you. So she wants you to know, she wants you to fully rely on God. Lord knows we all need to. And she also wants us to remember that we need to love each other as well. Melissa Zavala is with us. She said, I'm here. I just got a lot going on. I hate change. Life is nothing but change, Melissa. I hate to tell you that. <clears throat> uh, matter of fact, let me just tell you, even after your life is over, you're changing. Just think about it. Uh, and then she said, but no matter what, I'm focusing on God. I'm ready for Jesus to come. Praise God. Praise God for that, Melissa. David Smith with us. He said, good afternoon, everyone, and God bless. I talked to David briefly. Actually, it wasn't briefly. It was about an hour last night after the broadcast. And as we were finishing up, I panicked. I looked down at my finger, and that's the way the hand looked. And it's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like that. Do you know the difference? There's a white gold band on my finger normally, typically. And you can see where it was when it ain't there. Well, I looked down and I realized it wasn't there. And I panicked. I thought I had dropped it in the studio, in this office. And I was crawling all over the floor with flashlights trying to find it. And I got... I finally just said, well, I got to go upstairs. And I was ready to just disappoint my wife. But I didn't say anything about it. And then about an hour or so later, I uh, looked down on the end table by my side of the couch. <laughs> there it was. So I sent David a picture. said, God found it. Yay, God. So, um, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. By the way, we have raised $80. Thanks to all of you who contributed, six of you who contributed to that fund from April 20th to May 20th to help Miss Tammy Noblet. Miss Tammy was injured severely by two dogs who were attacking another smaller dog of hers, and she covered up the smaller dog, and she took the attack from the dogs. By the way, let me just say, if you don't see that as an illustration of Jesus for you, you just ain't thinking. So uh, we took up a collection for, for Miss Tammy. Uh, by the way, Teresa said, in typical Philip fashion, uh, let me just tell you what she means by that. In typical Philip fashion means Philip doesn't tell me when he has done something that might not make me happy. <coughs> and that Philip typically loses stuff a lot. <laughs> and when he does, he really doesn't tell me that. Unless it's keys and he absolutely has to have it in the next five minutes. So, um, and Teresa said, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, but she did say, yay, God, thank you for finding the ring. Anyway, uh, we're raise, we raised that $80 for Miss Tammy, and I had a, someone contact me, and they're going to match those funds. So next week, we'll be able to give Miss Tammy a, a nice little sum of money, not enough to pay for her not being able to work during those weeks that she was not able to work due to her injuries. But she is a contract... Uh, ASL interpreter and it's kind of hard to do that when your fingers are severely injured broken bones and it's all sorts of stuff so we just wanted to help. I just felt like I needed to use that fund that I would normally use to help my broadcast I'm 
I mean, I've been doing my broadcast for over a year, not asking anybody for anything. So what's another month? So I just decided we would use that to help Miss Tammy. So thank you very much for your assistance and your prayers for Miss Tammy and for this program and for God to bless it. By the way, let me just ask you, pray every day for me and for this broadcast that God will use it to bless someone. Let's look at our scripture for the day. It's an encouraging one. It's from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 2. And I've said this over and over and over. Probably my most favorite book in all of the Bible, the book of Ephesians. And Paul reminds us to be kind to one another. Be tenderhearted. Be forgiving one of, of one another. And why should we do this? And what is the example for this? Well, the why and the example is the very same. As God in Christ forgave you. But see, he wasn't just forgiving. He was also kind and tender-hearted too. So Jesus is our example. Jesus is the why behind the reason we should be kind one to another. Because we want others to come in contact with the love, the kindness, the tender heart, the forgiveness provided to us by Jesus, by God through Jesus on the cross. And by doing that, then we get, excuse me for the cough, by doing that, then we are able to point others to Christ and the cross and his sacrifice for them. And then it's up to them to make the decision to follow Christ. So uh, that's the whole reason why I do this broadcast, is to help point to God, to Jesus Christ. So someone might hear the truth and respond in kind to that truth. So that's why we want to be kind to one another. That's the whole point of what Paul was saying in this one little bitty verse. But not just in this verse, but in the entire book of Ephesians. You want to know how to live a Christian life? Read the book of Ephesians. That'll be a great help for you. Let's look at our prayer list real quick. Uh, I'm going to just spot through some of them. As always, we're going to continue to pray for Cameron and for Benny Rowell for their salvation and just pray that they will have their eyes opened by the Holy Spirit to their need for Jesus Christ. Pray for Miles Teaster as he continues to recover from his amputation caused by a lawnmower accident a, a month or so ago. Pray for uh, Miss Trudy Turner, who's still dealing with some sickness. Pray for David Smith, who's got kidney stone, one that just ain't going to move. Which is good for the moment, because if it's not moving, it doesn't hurt that much. But we need it to move on out to the east side, to the deluxe apartment in the sky. <laughs> Uh, let's pray for Michael Smith, David Smith's son. He's still looking for a job. Uh, and then we need to pray for the following families. We need to pray for the Carolyn Swindle family, the Carol Zavala family. Uh, and I think that's the only two that I have on my list right now. Uh, but there are a number of others who have lost loved ones. So we need to continue to pray for them. And then pray for our churches and our church leaders. And specifically this week, pray for the church leaders in the state of Virginia because the governor there is doing some really strange stuff. Uh, so just pray, pray for the churches and church leaders everywhere, but specifically for those in the state of Virginia this week. Pray for the health care workers everywhere as they're dealing with with all the medical pressures brought about by COVID, uh, the, the capacity pressures, the extra added uh, 
extra added procedures caused by COVID-19, all the other stuff that's caused as a result of this pandemic. And so pray for them. They're under a lot of pressure as well as our educators. The good news for educators, for high school and elementary and middle school educators, is for about two months, they get to breathe a little bit. But uh, like I said, it's going to be tough for them the first of next school year. David Smith said, I thank you and appreciate you for feeding and blessing me with the word of God. Love you, brother. Well, David, I'm just going to say this. If you're depending on me for your spiritual menu, you are depending on a woefully inadequate diet plan, spiritual diet plan. So I shouldn't be all of it. <laughs> just saying that. But, uh, but thank you. And I appreciate that greatly. Let's pray. And uh, let's see. Yeah, I got, Wow, we may actually get out of here before 6 o'clock. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you. Lord, there are many times in our lives that we forget why we should thank you and why we should praise you. And we just consider salvation as just an automatic thing, God, and it is definitely not an automatic thing. If it were an automatic thing, then all of us on the face of the earth would be saved and promised eternity in heaven, but that's not even true. Not even in the Bible is it taught to be true. And so, God, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to receive your blessed gift of salvation. Father, we thank you for that salvation you gave us through your Son, who bled and died on the cross to give us forgiveness of sin and rose again from the grave three days later to proclaim once and for all the promise had been kept. Father God, remind us of that every single day. Remind us to be elated and grateful and praise you for that one gift. And then, Lord, help us to pray to you for the strength and the guidance we need that we might live as you did through your Son, Jesus Christ, here on earth, and we might be kind to one another. We might be tender-hearted to others. We might be one who forgives one another. Why? Because that's exactly what you did through your sacrifice of your son. God, I'm not a parent, and don't think I'll ever be a parent it, biologically. But Lord, I couldn't imagine giving up a great nephew or a great niece or a nephew or a niece. I couldn't imagine it, Lord. But you gave your one and only son for me. Lord, help me to always be grateful for that. And let me be grateful enough to try to represent your son here on earth so that others might be able to receive that beautiful, wonderful, glorious gift. And help me to remember to pray for all of the people on this prayer list, Lord, daily. And as I do, to pray for them to receive your glorious gift and for them to glorify you. Father God, we ask these things in your most precious and holy Son's name. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior, the Messiah, who has come to save the world. Forgive us when we fail you, Lord. Forgive us when we disobey you, Lord. Forgive us when we even hate you. And thank you for loving us even when we were God-haters. 
by giving their son on the cross. God bless us. Lord, bring us back together. Father, remind us to, that we should never suffer the assembling together of the saints as some have habit to do. That's another verse from Ephesians, Lord, that we need to understand. Help us to gather Sunday with fellow believers to worship you corporately. And then God, uh, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, I won't be here, but that doesn't mean they can't get together at 545 and pray to you. Lord, help them just figure out a way. Lead them, God. Be with us as we travel that we might learn something wonderful about your creation so that we may be able to proclaim your love all the more clearly. Thank you, God. And again, we pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God love you. I love you which is more important than God loves you. Uh, let's see, Miss Cheryl said, we need to pray for the Colby family. Lost their mom due to complications from COVID. We will add her to that list. Miss Cheryl, if you will communicate with me and give me the name, the person's last name, and then we'll put that in the list, I promise you. David Smith says, already praying for, for that family, Miss Cheryl. Uh, and Teresa said she's praying and she loves God too and you as well David said amen and amen there we go and Melissa Zavala said amen and with that I'm going to give you it may be 60 seconds to pray for your spouse even though we used it yesterday hey any excuse I can use to get you to pray for my wife for dealing with me, and especially in this upcoming week with the trip. I need it, I promise you. God bless you. I love you. God does too. See you next week.